Welcome back to the charismatic voice. It's time for some seasonally appropriate material, but I didn't want to have something that was just for Halloween. So enter Bad Moon Rising. This could be about werewolves. I think it's actually a political song, but we're not going to focus too much on that because I have a feeling I'm going to be obsessing over John Fogarty's raw and outrageous vocals. Let's get to it. happy. <laughs> it's so uplifting. I thought this was going to be like a lot more down home south spooky vibes. <laughs> Retake. Back to the beginning. Here we go. I love his vocals. You guys turned me on to CCR, okay? Which I'm, I'm just sticking with CCR and tried, instead of trying to say the full name these days. Thank you for that tip. By the way, if you hear banging, uh, our roof has a problem. So it's getting, well, part of it is being worked on. So things happen in life. I'm a human. I have a roof over my head that needs fixing. <laughs> so um, back to his vocals. Uh, I love the way he does this uh, hovering. At one point, uh, it it really leaves us like leaning in, saying, "Oh, yes, and oh, yes, and oh, tell me more." I'll go back to the beginning to pick out these moments. It's just so chipper. <laughs> so it happens on IC and then it lifts up a bad moon rising. There's this hover that happens between those two phrases. He could have easily chosen to connect them, but instead there's a hover that invites the audience to ask a question. Like, oh yeah, wh what is it you see? And this phrasing pattern is repeated in many spots afterwards. I just have to mention, one of the things I noticed first seeing this live, and I love getting to see them perform live because his voice is just so incredible. Sometimes it makes a person like me think, well, how many times did he record to get to that sound? And then you see him live and you're like, nope, it seems really consistent. It seems like that voice is always there. And there's this incredible gravel that's in there, but then when his cleans are just just clean without any gravel, it's so full and and just seems really nicely supported. It's, it's a really good voice, really, really good voice. But seeing them live, one of the very first things I noticed, let's see if I can get a picture of it here. Yeah, that's a great picture. Man, I'm so glad that cords are longer now. <laughs> You're like, well, when you go to Amazon, you're like, well, how long would you like that cord? You know, that HDMI cable to connect that thing to that thing. Do you want it to just be one foot, three foot, six foot, nine feet? I'm looking at these guys with their cables tied into the amps there. Oh, being tethered like that on stage live is just inviting for you to, you know, clothesline yourself on that cable. Poor guys. One more time from the beginning.
actually a really simple song. I know the end is coming soon. Check that out. He decided to connect that phrase. Why did he choose that one? I'm gonna look at the lyrics too here. We're gonna figure out why he chose to connect that. It was all I see before. I think it's on I know that he decided to connect the phrase instead of hovering. Huh. It, it's so distinctive once you're listening for that hovering and appreciating it every time that you hear this, I know the end is coming soon is the only phrase that he's connected so far. I'm really curious if he'll connect more phrases or if he's gonna make that one stand out the rest of the time. It does seem like I know the end is coming soon is what it all boils down to. So maybe, maybe that's the point. Now we went back to the hover there. And then that one connected. So that was, I hear the voice of rage and rune. And I like the way that when he, in that particular phrase, he added even a little extra distortion onto the sound to just, I think, give voice to that voice of rage and ruin. There's some good emotion in it. His enunciation is fantastic throughout. He's, he's really playing with the different vowels that are there and singing into them. It's a little more similar to how I hear classical singers sing into vowels sometimes. Um, but he's got that more casual approach at the same time, so it has that down-home home feeling. Uh, I have to say, singers in Nashville, like when we really get to, especially country singers, they're are some incredible teachers and people that are focused on this contemporary singing technique that are, it gets very specific and can have amazing vowels. <laughs> of all the things, yeah, Elizabeth is nerding out about amazing vowels in country music that brings in lots of R coloring and lots of nasality. And, uh, but it's very specific and intentional and has a very reliable technique behind it. So here, I think that we've kind of got a combination of these things going on. I noticed this particularly on Rage and Ruin. I'll hop back to that spot, hopefully. Um, some people would just say Ruin, and, and instead he really emphasizes that last vowel, Ruin, to make sure you get the whole word in there. The ruin. Did you hear that shift at the end? Ruin, he's specific about getting it in. Nicely done. But don't put her out tonight. Who is bound to take your life? The bad moon on the right. It's just positively peppy about this bad moon. Maybe it is Halloween. <laughs> singing three pitches right now just over and over like Mary had a little lamb it, it is such a narrow range this guy can sing an insane range okay we gotta remember that he's like all over the place I love that about his voice but he doesn't need to do that all the time this song is shockingly simple with such good vocal expression in it I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. You don't need a massive range. You don't need the world's uh, most substantial voice to be an awesome singer. Like, he's not gone outside. I think, 
I don't think he's gone outside of a fifth. Like not even an octave range in this song so far. <laughs> Such a good lesson. This, if you're a beginning singer, this would actually really work well in karaoke. Just add lots of style to it. <laughs> it'd be a good, it'd be like, how can I dip my feet into karaoke? This one, this one. <laughs> Uh, I went up and, oh, it, the song is almost done too. This is a very short song. This is like way too short, right? Spoiled by metal. I like my songs, like, I think a sweet spot is really six minutes, maybe seven. Just gotta say, like, that's that's a nice, nice spot. I would love to have uh, some CCR that is extended. Uh, that being said, let's come back a little bit um, and let's talk about his mouth technique here. One of the reasons I think he's getting out such impressive vowels and enunciation is he's moving his mouth a lot. I, this is also one of the reasons I like seeing live performance like this. Let's see if we can get a view there. You guys have heard me talk about Pez dispensers before, right? Those dispensers where there's this really big mouth opening. It, hold on, I'm gonna go get a Pez dispenser. And this is a lesson in how to make a two minute and 15 video into a 17 minute analysis, we'll see how long this is. Pez dispenser. Uh, this is a wonderful Pez dispenser. It puts out candy that I have to say does not taste very good. We're gonna leave that there. But this idea, can you see like, and yes, it's it's a Mickey Pez dispenser. Look at that opening, yeah! Mouth openings. That kind of mouth opening, hopefully revealing a, a much tastier candy. Um, that kind of mouth opening, is something that we see a lot more of in opera, especially on the high notes. There's a phrase drop for the top, very important. Um, and when I see that kind of mouth opening in contemporary music, I always think about where they've trained, but then I think about how are they getting those words out? What's the enunciation like? And when we go back to all of the things, the compliments I had before, I think a lot of that is originating just from more mouth movement. In fact, one of the tips I give to starting students, beginner students most frequently, is just to move their mouth more. Really exaggerate those different shapes. And that helps people get out of things like a locked jaw or a ton of tongue tension. So uh, check out the Pez dispenser mouth while we finish this up. It's a lot more movement. If you're actually doing it, it's a lot more than you expect. Nice. I love the crowd's energy in this one especially. I've heard so many great things from performers about the Royal Albert Hall. If you wanna see a link to more analyses featuring incredible audiences, yeah, incredible audiences, you might've even been there, check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music and Pez dispensers every day.